talk about Pascal. Okay. okay. Let's, let's, let's move on okay. with Pascal. Okay. Okay, I got to start service soon. Uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> a lot of success in an area that that you wouldn't have expected in a little strip mall in Newport Beach. So. Started, everything just took off. Pascal was part of the start. No, I mean, yeah, Pascal was pretty, uh, I think Pascal pretty, pretty ahead of his time. Before. Thank you for kicking my butt. Um, he was the mascot of these events. Yes, he was. It was very, very French. Well, he I mean, fires me every time I see him. That's the thing. Anyways, we love you, Pascal. Je t'aime beaucoup. Yes, uh, I'm uh, Pascal Latz. People call me Chef Pascal, you know, and uh, I'm a chef here in Orange County. I've been around for about uh, 30 years. And uh, my life changed, you know, for the for uh, the, my business life, you know. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. I own a couple of restaurants. I also own a catering company. I like to do cooking classes, uh, cooking shows, and uh, interviews, of course, you know. So uh, now I I like I should, mainly I like to please people. So the main thing, this is why I am, you know. <laughs> any sauce, any soup, anything that you don't want the herbs into it. So just to get the flavor. And then you drop it into your little uh, thing. I think I started cooking, as far as I remember, as soon as my eyes went just over the stove, you know, right there, because I've been watching my mom cooking. And uh, I, actually, my first specialty was not even cooking, was, I mean, with fire, because you know, when you're a kid, you have to be careful, you may burn yourself, you may spill boiling water on you. Uh, so uh, my mom teach me how to make a mayonnaise and I probably was uh, seven years old. And, uh, uh, and she went, everywhere we went to have dinner with friends, she said, oh, Pascal is going to make the mayonnaise. So I was in the kitchen making mayonnaise. Uh, and believe me, I was really good making fresh mayonnaise. and was so stiff. So yeah, I probably was seven. And then, you know, you cook with your mom and you, you, uh, until you tell your mom, oh, I would like to add this, I would like to add that, and, and then we start to have a little kitchen conflict, but it's fun, it's good. Uh, my parents, uh, I, li I live in Rouen, in Normandy, France. Uh, so uh, I was uh, 15 years old, and my mother said, you need to work this uh, summer sc uh, holiday school, school holidays. And uh, I said, fine, you know, uh, what do you want to do? Well, I had two choices. I wanted to be either uh, working in in a botanical you know, landscape, or I say uh, maybe I want to uh, work in a restaurant and be being a chef. Uh, well, at that time we didn't say being a chef. So now they, everybody thinks they can be a chef overnight. But uh, at that time we just say I want, I want to cook. Uh, so she said, okay, I have a couple connections in uh, in town in Rouen. Uh, we we'll get you a uh, summer job. And two years in a row, I work in the best restaurant in my hometown, in Rouen. And uh, uh, when I was 15 or 16 years old, uh, very hard work. You work for two months, you, you get paid only uh, to cover your laundry and you get fed. And then uh, the, the rest is you know, history. You have to pay tax. And, and, but the, uh, and even actually, I bought a Muppet. Uh, the second time around, and it barely covered the price of the Muppet. Hello, Pascal, je, je t'aime beaucoup. <laughs> Chef Pascal, I actually worked with Pascal when I was 18 years old. He was in the Café Fleury and I was in Antoine. And the chefs of Antoine who were there from France, we weren't supposed to even talk to Pascal, but Pascal was so nice. We always talked to Pascal. Well, first I came here as a tourist and uh, did a couple of jobs uh, 
No, I'm to pay my vacation. Uh, I visit uh, uh, the son of a friend of mine from Saint-Tropez at the Royal Restaurant and they give me a few jobs on the weekends. And then I realized that, you know, there's a lot to be done in Orange County. And so it was a restaurant called Pola, it was on the peninsula. And then I, I work in a, a middle restaurant in South Coast Plata, uh, Pirates, was a very head of his time. Uh, because he was a cooking class, cool, actually, uh, and then the dining room, and the bar, on the wine bar, on the charcuterie bar. And this was back in 1987. So uh, that's a long time ago, uh, where you know, the, war, uh, the, the term foodies didn't exist. <laughs> so <laughs> foodies is just new, but you know, uh, if you say foodies at that time, maybe it's somebody from outside the planet, you know? <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> Foodie? <laughs> so, Anyway, we, we've been a long way from that, and then, but I, I start, and actually some good things that give me a sense of what needs to be done in Orange County. Well, that goes back a long time ago. Uh, well, we're not that old, you know, we're still <laughs> yeah, young. Maybe no? we shouldn't tell when no, it was, no. right, but it's a long time. <laughs> I think it's in the uh, uh, early or mid-80s. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right there in Newport Beach. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, and it was, I still remember. Uh, one good reason why I remember, of course, is for the dinner we had, the yeah. beautiful restaurant it was. And Antoine. And Antoine, and I remember even the sections. We talked about that the other day, yeah. how well designed that restaurant was, uh, because it had three sections. So when, when you're filling up a restaurant, it's a good feel. But the main, the main thing for me that night was also I was lucky enough to have my parents with me they came to the United States for the first time and then in those days I owned I had a Cadillac <laughs> my, my wife used to say I'm not gonna go in that car that's a car for pimps right? but, <laughs> but I love that it was a big old long, the, the long stretch to, and we drove down we drove from, from San Francisco with a Cadillac yeah along drove, the coast yeah along the coast Cruising. yeah and we came to see you and yeah, for my parents yeah. that was a souvenir that they never forgotten right yeah. because we were well received and and then, and then, and in those days, I still remember uh, where the Meridian was. Right, yes. there was basically nothing around. No, the airport was the, an old tiny the, airport. You had to walk to yeah, the airplane. Yeah, that's right. The airport, you yeah. literally walk to the airplane. But yeah. so that's how. Now we're talking like two dinosaurs here, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're still on. But we're still here. We're yeah. still doing and still kicking. So. <laughs> Orange County was a challenging market in the day. It was. You know, we were known for being a chain landscape, a chain restaurant landscape, and we had really great uh, chefs and talent here. You know, the four OGs of OC, Pascal being one of them, um, Bruno Serrato, Zove, and of course Alan Greeley. And, um, but the rest of it was very, very much chain, so it was difficult to start it, but when we started, everything just took off. Pascal was part of the start. Well, I, I don't want to uh, put down Orange County, but it was not known as a fine dining area. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, if you go to Southern California, you can eat in Los Angeles, but don't go to Orange County. There's no place to go out and eat, you know, uh, have a new, more have a great experience. I didn't know really that at that point. I just did what I felt was supposed to be done. And uh, uh, so I. Uh, I guess I brought up uh, a, a new approach of fine dining uh, where uh, the atmosphere was more friendly, not stuffy, uh, open up the, the dining room. I mean, open up the, the fine dining restaurant at that time was all dark home with red leather booths and uh, you know, very dark painting, on wood bar, on the, all these things. That, that was what was considered as fine dining at that time. On server, very high, and all those stuff that. And I bought something lighter, something more friendly, more, uh, I would say, green, and more down to earth. And that's what people like it. It was to my advantage that, you know, I was able to bring something new. So, uh, there was some, you know, some good restaurant around, uh, but the most uh, successful restaurant uh, fancy were more like, we, we don't even call them like that now. They were continental restaurant, continental cuisine. I don't even know what that means, continental cuisine, you know, because uh, from which continent, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense, you know. 
So, so years ago, uh, you know, I, I spent more, not more time, uh, I forced myself. I learned that actually from uh, one of the chefs I work uh, with in France, uh, Paul Bocuse. And uh, actually at that time I was a server in his restaurant in Lyon. And he was really the pioneer of a chef going out of the kitchen. Uh, always visit every lunch, every dinner, go in the dining room and visit every single table. And this, this is what made him who he is today, you know. Uh, chef outside of the kitchen. They well. introduce themselves when they call and say, I'm a friend of Pascal, can I talk to him? I say, who is he? I don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because you, you, that's always, okay. you always come out to talk to these people. Oh yeah, right? yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah uh, It's part of the experience. I want them to uh, to connect. And for me, it's, it's my fuel. Pascal, for 20 years, our friends the Jacksons introduced us when he had the restaurant on Bristol. And a friend of mine used to love to eat his mussels. We would go there for lunch <laughs> probably once a week to eat Pascal's mussels. So we're big fans. When we found out he was here, we couldn't wait to be here and have breakfast. My wife comes here and has lunch. And we're delighted. And the food has been amazing. That halibut was unbelievable. Inside the kitchen, as far as the food, so years ago, I think I brought something that people didn't know. I, even though my cuisine is classical, uh, because of my background, uh, because I, I like anything that have roots, you know, I mean, uh, history and past. Uh, but I cook with uh, some light approach. I don't put starch in the sauce. I cook with reduction. I cook with flavors. I cook with fresh herbs. So I brought all this, you know, it was a kind of a French Mediterranean flair into the French cooking. And I think that's what uh, clicked at that time, you know, in Orange County, bringing, oh, this is what French cuisine is. You know, uh, it's not only that rich, heavy food. Uh, I bought something new, refreshing of uh, French cuisine uh, 30 years ago. But Pascal, actually, in the in the Orange County food scene, it even uh, south, uh, even the Western United States, he has trained more of the chefs that we know today through his kitchen than anybody else. He has been doing it uh, at a high level, high quality uh, French cuisine. He's an ambassador of French cuisine here to the United States, not just to to Orange County. And he's been and he's such a open heart you know that guy you know I say hey Pascal we're gonna do this what do you need what do you need what do you need he's always the first guy to help you know so you know Pascal is the first in the, in the kitchen in the morning he's the last to leave at night and he puts his heart and passion into it and if you can't understand that then you you wouldn't get it anyway so anyways we love you Pascal Je t'aime beaucoup. Uh, I worked for, for Pascal straight out of culinary school and uh, he gave me the opportunity of working at Tradition and I learned a ton from him. Uh, he's, he's an amazing, amazing guy, very passionate chef and uh, you know, just the classic French food that, that we were putting out at Tradition was just awesome. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Pascal. He was a mentor to me, um, more on the business side of things than anything else. He he uh, he had a lot of success in an area that that you wouldn't have expected in a little strip mall in Newport Beach. So, yeah. You know, there's always something. You know, like when he showed up at the chef demo with a fake tattoo sleeve. I mean that. I mean that. That's kind of a regular occurrence with him. Or. Um, uh, the latest thing, and I don't know how funny it is, but we were talking about the Golden Foodie Awards, and he said, I would like to do an intermission, intermission skit on stage with other chefs. Can I write it? And I said, well, let's talk about this more. You know, I want to see what this looks like, but it's a great idea. Um, so, you know, he's just always up for something funny and adventurous and... Yeah, you just never know where it's going to take you. Uh, my connection with Pascal is going back to when I was the chef at French 75 15 years ago. And uh, French Bistro run by David Wilhelm. I was the chef there and um, started to do these events and these uh, special events and charities. And Pascal uh, 
really, um, he was the mascot of these events. He was, he was the cheerleader of these events. And he's, his, uh, Pascal is not a chef. To me, he's a, an incredible human being and he's really a, just a wonderful person. Um, he is uh, warm, friendly, affectionate. He's, his, his uh, enthusiasm is contagious and he is, um, he's really a chef chef and he just champions what we're doing here. <laughs> okay, that's yeah appetizer. That's the app, you know. Uh, it's actually it's a local because uh, everything has to be local. Okay, we think we have what uh, 200 mile radius or something like that. But it's even close. I have some uh, pork belly from a farm in uh, in the Julian area, and uh, it's called Cook's uh, uh, Farm. Actually, they make fantastic pork. And I have a pork belly that I confit in pork fat, so slowly cook. And then I'm, I'm cutting pieces, I'm going to uh, pan sear that uh, uh, little piece of uh, confit of uh, pork belly. And I make, so take on the French, I make a, a cassoulet, but it's not a cassoulet with beans, because I could not find any beans that go close to us enough. So the beans I use is corn. So I use fresh corn from Manesero farm. That I took off of the, um, of the corn. I saute with a, a lo local uh, uh, heirloom tomato and uh, local sweet onions. And uh, I spice it up with, a, I make a powder of herb from Manasaro Farm, of course, that uh, uh, everybody is trying my food, they're already very excited. And then, so the, I dry out that uh, these herbs, uh, they all mix together, basil, rosemary, thyme, and make that powder that finish to spice up this uh, cassoulet. So it's really a corn casserole with tomato and onion. And I put that on the top of the, uh, of the pork belly, but also made under, the, uh, under this a little onion marmalade, an onion marmalade that uh, a very slow cook, puree, and uh, finish with, uh, uh, with uh, no oyster today, I'm sorry. But uh, I could have done a cock of you know? Maybe it's not too late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> shop, shop, guy. <laughs> we have some wine, we have a, the, the, the rooster, and then... He's, he's closest to our This you know? is perfect. This is, will be the closest food you can eat tonight. All right. Uh, just give me two hours, be ready. But uh, so that... Uh, I make that onion, soft onion puree that I uh, season with uh, a temacum, temacula oil. It's a blood orange oil, uh, onion puree that I put with a, that little mix that you're going to eat, eat in one bite. So uh, hopefully a few people uh, will drop the beans in a jar because they love it. Thanks. Are you going to win this year? I'm a winner. I'm already here. <laughs> yeah. That mean, yeah, always. Yeah, if I call him, he's calling me back, you know, always, you know, systematically. Or pick up if he can, you know, if it's at the right time. He's generous with his time and his spirit, isn't I, he? I, I think he is, yeah. He, he, I, think, I don't know if it's his age where he, he wants to give, up, give on or pass on things, you know, in a sense too as well, maybe, you know. I think when you reach a certain time, you, you feel like you, you want to give away what you accumulate as an experience through the year and pass it on maybe just to put like so he passed on gener another generation you know, Mimi said the first time I apply and I work for them uh, before I work for them because they, they, she didn't want to hire me she, she said you can only have one Pascal in Orange County <laughs> you know and I'm like shit <laughs> man <laughs> and I said my middle name is Xavier and she's looking at me like, <clears throat> Well, what, what is the French guy thing he is, you know, and they didn't hire me. Of course she did not, you know, but uh, uh, maybe this is what it is. I think Pascal also accomplished so much in his life, in his career, you know, so I think it, it, it's, a, it's a natural succession to pass on. To answer your question about uh, like to, uh, to teach or to, or to cook or to pass your uh, knowledge, uh, yes, uh, I feel very uh, 
strong about that. You know, that's my my duty these days. Uh, and uh, actually, all around me, there's about probably eight or ten chefs that own or are partners in restaurant. They used to work in my kitchen. Not talking about the other uh, cooks and chefs and you know, been around them, and, but I, I want to uh, to go backward and, and to answer that question better. Uh, this stage in the life of a chef, you know, uh, first you you are, you're curious, so you're in the kitchen and you know you put your fingers, you know, like I'm back to my seven years old thing, and you test. So this is this is a curiosity thing, and then uh, you anxious to learn. So you you listen, you listen to your mother, you you watch. So there's an observation period, and then there's a learning period when you get older enough to go to school or you learn from other. Uh, thing like that. After the learning period, there's you have to find yourself. Am I a cook? Am I a chef? Am I a restaurant owner? You know all these components. You know. Uh, you can be a great cook, but you cannot be a good chef. You can be a great chef, but maybe you cannot. You don't. You're not a great cook. But it's not because you're a great cook, a good chef. You can be a good restaurant owner. There's, there's so much component. And after the, you find out who you are or where you are, and then you realize that you teach others. This is when now you have this a sharing time. And I'm at that stage now. That to share, to share knowledge, to uh, transmit, to. I, I think I'm in the, my favorite period of my professional life. But now I realize people work with me or want to learn, uh, will come to my cooking class, and I'm able to transmit. And this is probably why I talk much more now, because I have much more to say. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to make up stuff, uh, make up stuff, because you know, it's, you, when you think, you, are, you, you accumulate all this knowledge. And you know, I'm very anxious to uh, to pass on. So yes, it's very important to uh, when you know what to do to transmit your knowledge. And uh, uh, for me, it's uh, the the greatest time of my day when I can do that. So it was it was fairly old kitchen, and we were doing so many so many numbers there in 1990. From I mean, I was there from 1990 to 94. I mean, we're doing 140 in a really really small kitchen, um, and it's. Yeah, we, we click right away pretty much. Uh, I mean, I was there for four, four, five years. And I got, I got a green card out of it. Oh, really? <laughs> Pascal and, uh, and Mimi at the time spo uh, sponsored me for, uh, for a green card. So, um I have to say, it does happen that sometimes your temper uh, take over uh, a moment but uh, what well, I have to say you know maybe 25 years ago uh, you know, I was more explicit in a, in a kitchen but uh, you learn quickly that you don't get the best of your staff uh, when you create that much stress uh, and uh, uh, even though you you probably right, you know, because you know when something is done wrong, you want to say it, but there, there is a well, slide. <laughs> so, so, uh, so even though you probably right, but uh, you learn soon that you know you get a bet, better result if you have a, a team that happy to work together. Uh, but still, a team want to uh, know their mistakes. So you, you, you teach and you, uh, you mellow down and make sure you, you, uh, you tell your staff when they do something wrong. But you have to move on. But um, I, I would have to say that's like the only kitchen at Pascal's was the only kitchen where I ever had to. We got so busy, so backed up, so crazy that we had to stop service. All the chefs left the kitchen, shut off their burners. We all left the line in the middle, middle of a eight o'clock on a Friday night, you know, or 8.30 on a Friday night, super busy. We all left, we were out in the alley, and we just stayed out there for like about a minute, which seemed like an hour, you know, because, you know, and then just trying, trying to remember where you hid your fish, you know, because we were doing Chilean sea bass back then, and it, 
and it had to go in the oven with a piece of parchment on top and then it had to get pulled out and then you had to put it somewhere and the kitchen was so small there was two of them on the shelf here and there was one on top of the printer and there was one around the corner right there behind the behind your you know saute pans so you would have to try to remember where it was and then when they picked up that order you grabbed it pulled the parchment off of it and put it up in the salamander so it would brown the top of it I mean it was an amazing dish and I still make that sauce to this day, um, the seafood cream sauce that we made for that. And I've taught it to a lot of people, but it was, a, it, was a, it was the only time that we'd have to, you know, we just got so crazy in the kitchen that you had to get out, you know. People, because there was a window there, so people can watch us cooking there. Once uh, dinner service starts, I think I'm like that still. <coughs> you catch the momentum and you're like, I don't like to say that, but you're like a machine, you know. Tick it come, you know what to start, what, what to keep an eye on. Because, you know, at one point, the whole stove is covered, the whole oven is full, the whole <laughs> pickup line is full of plates. Because you have people, uh, other coming in, other coming out, food cooking. I, one, one thing, I, it may not be good as, a business uh, way to enter the kitchen. Every single piece of meat or fish is cooked to order and I make the sauce in that pan. Okay, if you order a steak from me, I'm going to make that sauce in the same pan that I cook your steak. So that's why it's a lot of pans. If you have 20 people at the same time, you have 20 pans. You know? Hopefully, a few of them order the same thing. We can group them in one plate or one pan, you know, two or three. Uh, piece of chicken or two or three pieces of beef but that's why you make it very intense because and you have to and then I was very picky you know when when you pull out the beef or the meat from the pan you actually cook it you put it in a resting pan why resting well because you know it's good you know, to let it sit but also I like the dripping from that to put it back into the sauce I don't like to waste anything. It's not a question of money, it's a question of flavor. If, uh, if your chicken is dripping in a, uh, the resting pan and you don't use that juice, you know, just throw away the chicken. Because you know? actually most of the flavor is going to be in the, in the dripping juice of that chicken breast. So you need that, it's going to be your essence to put back into your sauce. And this is why you, you keep all these flavors all together. I hear, I don't see that much, you know? I mean, come on, the truth is, he's a lot, I hear he's a lot nicer. I should say nicer, I should take this out. <laughs> Not a lot nicer. <laughs> he's a lot mellower than he used to. And trust me, I like, I like discipline in the kitchen too. Uh, and I think it's, it's missing these days, you know. But uh, yeah, back in the day, man, it was like, it was crazy. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. It was like, uh, it was lunch, dinner, it was like, uh, it was, it was, it was hot. It was a lot of energy. It was, it was pretty crazy. Was, was he, did he yell? Was he yeller? Or? Well, once in a while, but you know, I've, I've seen it. I grew up with it. So, you know, it, it, for Nothing me, more than usual, exactly. Right? It was, okay. it was, uh, it was, uh, it was normal for me. For others, it might seem a little bit much, but for me, it was very normal. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was amazing to, to be here and see America, you know, it's like, wow, you come from France and you see America. It's like, wow. It's like, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> Pascal fired me twice. You know, I worked three times for him. You know, and then he fired me two times out of the three. Uh, so I was a little bit crazy, I guess. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, I started to work for him in uh, back in 2001, the first time when he has a little uh, cafe Pascal in Sasquatch Plaza, and I used to have another job at the same time, and that was my first job, and that's the first time I got fired for a restaurant. Because someone again, <laughs> well, I don't know if you can say that, but <laughs> but uh, you know, I guess drop some pennies on the table as a, as a tip, and then I was like, "Whoa, I'm not not gonna take this. What do you think I am?" You know, and I, literally, I was here maybe maybe less than a year, like literally less than a year, and the manager, you know, the staff said, "Pascal, did you say that to the people?" And I said, "Yeah, but you cannot say that. Here we go, it's your." That's it for you. Thank you. Yeah, that's the first time I lost my job. Yeah. If I fire them, you know, probably was a good reason. <laughs> uh, but maybe the reason was good for me, but good for them too. Uh, I believe uh, uh, no, 
somebody tell you, you the mistake you make, then you can correct it. But I, I never went after them to take them back, but they came back on their own. Uh, it's just terrible working with Pascal. It's awful. He, well, he fires me every time I see him. That's the thing. He, I kid you not, he fires me all the time. So, but I think he must be desperate because he keeps hiring me back. So that's good. No, no. Pascal was very intense. He, he, he would, um, the intensity would, would, uh, would, would kill most people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you don't have a backbone, you know. Um, but yeah, it was pretty intense. Ne never throwing too much, but very intense. Yeah. You know, always, always uh, super, super intense. Um, he knew what he wanted. Yeah, it's it's very focused, you know. It's it's it, and I mean, I mean, you get a lot from that too. You know, you look and you go, you know, it's like, this is not personal. This is this is very focused, and uh, I apply a lot of that stuff here too. I mean, you can't these days do too much. I mean, uh, you know, it's a little harder, I think, in this in these days to 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 do what maybe we used to do 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I think. He inspired me. Yeah, yeah. Cameron was there for that. He was. He was, Cameron was working at Brasserie when he came in for that one. Uh, we, we were working, we were just cranking out a service on a Saturday night and I forgot what started it, but Pascal and I started getting into it. He started yelling at me in French and I was just, I don't know what you're saying to me. I have no idea. I'm trying to learn French, but I just, I don't, you're going too fast and too loud. I don't know what you're saying. And he got really pissed off at me. He said, you're fired, get out of the kitchen, get out of the kitchen. And I just stopped and I'm like, I can't chef, I have to finish this table. I can't just stop cooking this. He's like, get out of my kitchen. I'm like, chef, I cannot stop. I have to finish cooking this. I need to plate this, the people are waiting for their food. And he tried to fire me like four times and he ended up getting so frustrated with me not wanting to leave the line that he just walked out, went to his office for like 15 minutes, came back and played like nothing ever happened. And that happened a couple times. We got into it a lot. Pascal was, uh, he was like a father figure to me. He was a, he was a mentor. So the, uh, the connection that we had where I had the utmost respect for him. It was yes chef to anything that he wanted, but there were times where we would kind of butt heads because we spent a lot of time together. And it was his protege and I wanted to question his reasoning and he's a chef and chefs don't really like when you question the reasoning because the reasoning is there for a reason because they want it done that way and you're not supposed to question that but we had a lot of fun doing that it's always under the pressure of the moment and usually never had any hard feeling uh, if I give you a time tonight tomorrow it's the end of the day and we start all over again so and it's pretty why they understand and I learn they, they walk around go to other places and want to come back and work with me on that and no, no happening, and I, actually, I don't remember who did wrong, who did what. I'm, I'm fine, you know. It's most of my uh, employees, and ex chefs, sous chef cooks, were all really good. If not, they would not work for me. And so, um, I all wish them the best, and a lot of them have done very well. So, I'm very proud of them. friendly and, and, and then his accent is really nice and that's when I found out he was French of course. <laughs> and then once in a while the company grew, as a group will go to the fine dining side mm -hmm. and all the food of course is really good. Yeah. Yes, my accent actually uh, is probably a, a plus for me. Uh, it makes my food more authentic. So I, 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 you can tell, you know, if I lose my accent, my food probably won't taste French. And uh, my audience, uh, uh, I don't know, they love my accent. So I've been working on it very hard well to not lose it. So for the last three years, it's one of my main things to practice on my accent. So my food tastes really French. I think his accent is fake. He's been here for a really long time, and I think he's just putting it on, and so. <laughs> but my, really, my first restaurant that I remember is I cook in a restaurant in Rouen called La Couronne. And it, you know, it's sunny down the road, you know, uh, three years later, I find out that was the first restaurant where Julia Child had her first French meal in France. So this is where I really learned how to cook. So it's amazing to have that connection being here. And 30 years ago, just you know, to tell a little uh, 
360 degrees uh, story. Uh, I cook for uh, Julia Child's 80th birthday here in, uh, uh, in Marina del Rey. So the whole thing, cooking in a place where she was there for the first time in France, and then doing our 80th birthday, no, it's, it's a great, uh, uh, it's a great journey. Uh, yes, chef, uh, to celebrate with Julia. Uh, merci, Julia. Birthday. Merci, Julia. Merci, yeah. Julia. It's, it was an amazing event, oh, yeah. Amazing. Because uh, we felt like, uh, really, as uh, representing the French cuisine in the United States, it's not a chef, really, who brought... I mean, we, don't get me wrong, many chefs brought the cuisine. But I think Julia Child was a big part of it with her show because it was about French cuisine on the beginning, right, that she did. And I think she really was the best representative of the French cuisine in the United States and that's why we call the event Merci Julia because it was only mostly French chefs to say thank you for what you did for us and then, and then I still remember that event so well because the decision was taken at Fleur de Lis in San Francisco with Michel Richard uh, we had like two, two chefs and, and like usually happens they stay late at night and we had more to drink and then more to drink and then suddenly at the end we said we came up with the idea right of giving it Michel Jacques Christian Racine yeah Christian Racine and then um I'm not going to come up with it, but it was, it was supposed to be something small, right, to say really, thank you, Julia. Roland Passo. Roland Passo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then what happened is the event really grew, right? And then when you go to a stage where beyond... It was global. It was yeah, global. And, and, from all over the world. And, then, and then it was, it became like a major event, uh, a little bit harder to control at the end. But the original idea was really us French chefs, a small group, to say thank you. Yeah. That was a, she was, was amazing. And she was amazing. Yeah. That lady. Wow. Yeah. I, I want to talk about Julia Child. No, and Julia Child was and still is an amazing person. Uh, uh, the fact that she <coughs> decided to uh, cook French cuisine at a time that, you know, it was a myth, you know, and, and she decided to make it right. And she worked really hard to, uh, to make sure every recipe was perfect. Uh, she really set up the base of uh, uh, the love of cooking in the U.S. And she really set up also the, the fact that uh, uh, you can watch somebody cooking in, a, in videos like we're just doing now. She was really a pioneer uh, of uh, cooking in a studio and using her own kitchen to create uh, that uh, kitchen ambiance. Uh, and as a character, she was amazing. She was so nice. She was, you know, especially with this river statue, you know, a tall person, you could be really intimidated by her. But on her voice, on her presence, but she's, she still look at you and talk to you like she wants to know you. She wants to know what do you want, what do you want to learn, uh, what can I tell you. She was n not that friendly, friendly that, you know, it was real, you know, so, and she would never say no. I ask her for some signature, I put, I put a, a montage of pictures, say, yeah, sure, give it to me, I write a note on it or something, <clears throat> and then I have a picture at home, we smoke cigar together, you know, that's a character, you know, so she, she was beautiful, she, she loved life, she, and that translates to make you love food <clears throat> and make you love cooking. And she was an amazing person and somebody you can't forget. When you had uh, chef events, it used to be at least 50% of the chefs were French. And now it's maybe one or two when there's 20 other chefs. So it's a big change. Of, uh, uh, you know, the American chef, you know, are not taking over, but they are at that level that before people were thinking only the French chef could do. So it's amazing, you know. Uh, we used to be like a little gang of French chefs in every event. Now I'm lonely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I speak better English, you know. <laughs>
I had ducks on my eyes, I had sea bass on my eyes, but this is the only place that is done right. And so this is what you have to focus on. And every other ingredient that goes around have to have a reason to be there. Yeah, I mean, there's some old, there's some uh, good dishes from um, from Bocuse, you know, that, that that he picked up, that I picked up as well, because he worked for Paul Bocuse for a little bit. Uh, some really strong, I think the strong classical French. Um, not that we do this now, but we, we kind of mix both a little bit. A little bit of the old world, really amazing techniques, you know, and, and, uh, and the new way of doing it, I, I would say. I'm going to talk about my uh, famous uh, sea bass. Uh, it's a sea bass with a time cross uh, that is actually, I would say posh, but it's more like braised and baked. Uh, this is what is the complexity of the, uh, of the dish. I put that on my menu in 1988 at uh, Pascal and uh, Newport Beach. It was there, I didn't know it become my specialty. It was right in the center of the menu as Pascal's specialty. And it, I call it specialty because it really uh, combine several techniques. Also combine my uh, travel through the time and, and region and, and country that I've been through. Uh, so it's combining the sauce will be more originally from Normandy. The tomato under the fish will be more of a southern France. Uh, and uh, uh, as well as the time cross on the top. And, uh, and then now more of the California modern touch, I put some uh, drizzle of uh, flavored oil on it. So it's really a combination of techniques, origin, and for my uh, uh, chef life. No, I mean, yeah, Pascal was pretty, uh, I think Pascal pretty, pretty ahead of his time for, for the time, you know, I mean, we, we were doing Bocuse dishes, you know, he had this dish where, with thyme butter where, man, we could not keep enough in, uh, in the house and it, it was like a, a piece of sea bass with thyme butter on it and all day long we're screaming, more thyme butter, more thyme butter, you know, it's like, it's like, we sell so much of that, of that dish, but. Uh, so, the fish itself is poached in a pan, in a white wine, and we make a crust of uh, uh, with fresh uh, bread crumble and fresh thyme and parsley and garlic and butter. And we make the compound that we put on the top of the fish. Nice color. And then outside of boiling the fish in that pan, we bake it inside the liquid. We call that technique braising. And once it's cooked through, uh, we pull it out. And then uh, before we put it on the plate, we will broil it so it gets nice and crispy and varnish on the top. But I worked in the, I worked in his kitchen for a year at Pascal's, and I would say it was one of the most challenging steps that I had taken because I had been in high volume restaurants, and this is a very very small line, very intensive. Um, all a lot of sauces are done ala minute. Very few sauces are done ahead of time, and it's. It was very, very French. I mean, you were making tomato concasse where you had to blanch them, shock them, peel them, dice them, no seeds, it had to be perfect. And then on the plate, I make tomato concasse with uh, slow cook onions, uh, diced tomato, they've been peeled and seeded. They're all cooked together in a extra virgin olive oil, touch of garlic and herb. All that uh, concasse is going to cook in the oven for about two hours, so we, all the, the tomato is too, very tender. And we take it out, I even go another step, I strain the juice from that, reduce the juice, put it back in so to enhance the flavor of the tomato. The sauce is made with seafood, but you don't eat the seafood. All I'm using is the juice, the essence. I extract the essence of the shellfish, scallop, mussel, shrimp, and then I strain everything. So it really has layers, very subtle, but you, you don't have the seafood in your mouth, just the essence of it. So that tomato congress goes under the fish. So, and then we serve the sauce so on. So you have all that combination. I always tell people, grab your fork and go from the top to bottom. So you go through the time cross, then the fish, which is very flaky, and then the tomato sauce, concasse, and then you, you grab it through the sauce, and you, then you go to, the, to your mouth. 
I have to say also the sauce is a reduction of mussel juice, shrimp juice, and fish, uh, fish fumet that been reducing with shallots on thyme, with white wine, and then reduce again with cream and then strain. So when you go with that and then you finish with the sauce, you don't know what you're going to have at the, at the end of your, your grab. And you have that mix of seafood that goes into the fish and the tomato on the thyme. So I guess, you know, this is what makes it a very special dish. Well, we've been a personal friend of Pascal's ever since he opened his first restaurant in uh, Newport Beach. So we follow him around like a debutee or a <laughs> he is our uh, uh, founding chef. Uh, we were there when uh, Paul Bucous uh, came from France to uh, spend the day with him and he of course was a, a sous chef of Paul Bucous in France and that was the, probably the best experience I've ever had in my life when it comes to food, Paul uh, Bucous and, and Pascal. Anyway, thank you so much and this is a wonderful venue. Now, I have to say, um, Pascal is my French brother from another mother. He's awesome. He's, um, we, from the minute we met, we absolutely just hit it off and, and we have a really good time together and we enjoy fooling around and cooking and, you know, and having fun with, with, the, with our customers and so it's just an absolute joy. I, he's the most, um, generous man in spirit and in giving and in, and in teaching and in every way possible that I've ever met, bar none. I want I to mean, talk about where we are now. And if you can see uh, uh, this little logo here of the uh, farmer's wife and the friendship. We're in the farm, middle of Irvine, you know, with you know, growing and housing everywhere. And uh, I was approached a bit over a year ago by uh, the the farmer uh, to do some events at the farm and uh, do uh, get involved with the, the produce here. Yeah. We, we met through kind of a mishap that happened um, for a charity event. I had uh, offered to donate produce and I heard from Pascal that he wanted to use our produce and then through a mishap um, another chef had said she was picking up his produce and, and it never arrived. And I had, was there all day, and and then come time for the event, Pascal's like, "Oh, where's my produce?" I'm like, oh, "What do you mean? I gave it to her yesterday, and and it didn't happen." And so I'm like, "Whatever you, whatever you need, we'll do whatever you need." And he's like, "Don't worry, we manage, we manage." We and so he was just so gracious, and I thought, "Well, the man's gonna kill me. We're here, we this is like a $350 plate dinner." And it's hours before the event, and, and he's looking for his produce. And so he was so sweet at the event. And then the next day after this event, Pascal called me after being so gracious and everything in public. He calls me and he's like, oh, hello, Anne, this is Pascal. And I thought, oh, great, now he's going to gonna get it. Now that we're, it's over the phone and it's private, he's going to kill me. And no, he, came, he was like, I came out to the farm this morning, and I absolutely loved it, and I want to work with you. So, I mean, he was just so, just so amazing. And, then we did our um, first breakfast in the barn, and I'll give you a quick story about actually our second one, which was the chef that was coming out, I think had a little too much fun the night before and um, was late and also was young, doesn't have children and stuff, and, and so he was not quite as prepared as we'd like for him to be. And so we had people that were here and were hungry, and so Pascal literally had three eggs. And I had 50 people here, and he had three eggs, and he said, it's like, and you have a tomato and an onion. I'm like, I'm at a farm. Yes, I do. And so I, I went in and grabbed an onion and a couple of tomatoes and Pascal literally fed 50 people with three eggs and a tomato and an onion. <laughs> and we, he, we did that. And then, then by the time, then the, by that time the chef had gotten here, we got three more eggs from him. He did it again. We did it all twice and fed them twice before he was ready, before the other chef was ready. So I'm like, that's how good Pascal is. And he can come in here and whip up this fabulous thing for 50 people with three eggs. So I think that's pretty amazing. And we, we partner, and now I'm a, a, like the resident chef at the Manasero Farm here in Irvine. And I come here almost every morning, and uh, I don't, 
Yeah, here you go. See, I come here, I take my uh, French farmer's uh, pocket knife and I go in the field and cut and pick my own produce and vegetable before, before I go to work. And for a chef, uh, it kind of completes my, uh, my, my life of chef. Coming in the farm and be able to pick something today that's going to be in your plate, you know, two or three hours later. Uh, there's nothing better. Uh, and also they obligate me to, uh, to cook whatever is available. You know? It's not like going to a, uh, to a store and you, you pick something with not of season, in season, so that means it comes from you know, uh, another country, you know? come from uh, uh, three or four states away. Uh, no, here you cook what you have here in your backyard and, and fresh from this uh, time of the year. So here at the farm, that's, uh, I'm, I'm com complete with, uh, like now we have fresh heirloom tomato, fresh white corn, I pick all my fresh herbs here, and I'm going to take you for a tour later. And then, uh, and then so we, we grow on this, and uh, now with Anne Manassero, we create uh, uh, the farmer's wife and the French chef. And we do uh, cooking events here. I have a guest chef. We do breakfast every month. Uh, I have a uh, um, quickie lunch at the barn, you know, uh, here. And uh, uh, we do a cooking demonstration. And so we team up and we, we do all kind of things here. And it's a, it's a great place to be in the middle of Irvine, uh, very urban now, to have a beautiful farm you know, uh, with uh, many uh, acres of. Uh, of growing vegetables. Pascal, I know he about 25, 20, 23. 23 years. 23 maybe, yeah. 23, 24. What do you, what do you think of him? Him? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Everybody like him, don't you? So. What like do you really a, think of him? Uh, yeah, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Really nice people. You, and you guys uh, have done a lot of good stuff. Yeah. We do a lot of things that, yeah. So together with, with Pascal, he goes out and finds me these amazing chefs from different restaurants and and they come in and do their their own take on either breakfast or dinner or kind of whatever event that we're having right now. We do a lot of breakfast in the barn, it's once a month. And um, I just love it because the chefs, they, they Pascal will tell them what the event is and say, you know, we have this produce or whatever, and you come and cook, and, and they all think that they have an idea of what they're going to do. And then inevitably, they come to the farm, and they see what's here and how fresh it is, and they maybe take some home with them, and the menu always changes. So then it's, it's way more involved and way more elaborate than, than what they thought they were going to do because they have a good time doing that. And like today, this morning, Chef Abe went out into the field and picked stuff. I was like... Where is he? And he's out there with his crew picking stuff to prepare this morning. So you can't get much fresher than that of literally going out and picking it and walking it over a few feet. So I went yesterday morning to farm and a fish market. I got a, I find a nice black mussel. Then corn from Manacero, tomato, Manacero, cilantro, Manacero, and then zucchini, pig, it's Manacero. So I buy Master from fish market, everything is all Monocero stuff. <laughs> the habanero, like uh, Monocero habanero mango. I want people to know how to cook fresh food. And um, I am a decent cook in my own right. I'm, I'm a good cook, but I, I'm a cook. And I'm like, that's the difference between a cook and a chef. I can, I can cook and, and so uh, kind of our tagline is from good to gourmet. I can cook something and I can make it good. And then Pascal comes along and he does his little French things and makes it fantastic. And so it goes from good to gourmet. <laughs> okay, you sure you have enough tape, huh? We can. <laughs> so, all right, the question about what French cuisine is, our French dining experience is. If that's I want to be very French, I would say, yeah, French cuisine is the best, you know, that's the only real cuisine. But uh, is the reason people think uh, French cuisine is very important is because uh, this is what I think we have the most m memories and history 
uh, knowledge uh, because French cuisine was part of the uh, cuisine of a lot of uh, uh, famous people in the world centuries ago. Uh, every uh, country leaders uh, wanted to have a French ethnic cuisine. Every uh, country on Napoleon or whoever wanted to have real French cuisine in, in their uh, kitchen. Uh, and probably the French, because of the French, uh, really enjoyed to eat. So everybody said, hmm, why the French are so happy and they spend so much time at the table? Uh, it's just because the French culture is about uh, enjoying life, you know, taking time and sit down for a two or three hour meal. You know? Even on, uh, on a daily basis, we still have a, an hour and a half break at lunch. You go in France, the store closed. Why? Because everybody is taking lunch. You know? So uh, we, in Sunday, you know, Everybody closed at noon because everybody has their uh, family meal. So, uh, so it is the culture that that attach the cuisine. And in people's expectation, I think that's why it has to be. You go out to a French restaurant for an experience uh, because we have to say it's not me, but the French know how to eat. They know how to dine. They know how to spend time at the table. So really, the experience is not only the food. is that you sit down and you know we're going to do two, three, four more courses. You know you're going to eat uh, dinner for more than an hour, an hour and a half, or two hours. It, you pace your time. So that's really French dining experience. And also, uh, uh, the French uh, have learned, and we all do that because we, this is the way we eat at home. We, we have uh, a graduation on the food, you know, we start, uh, of course, something light, something delicate, and then something more rough, a soup or a stronger salad. And actually not the salad, we all French, we're supposed to eat the salad after the meat. But, and then the fish, and then the meat, and then the cheese, and the salad, and the dessert. That's all graduation. And it's based on the uh, flavors, texture, and you know, all these things. But as far as cuisine, uh, it is a real French cuisine, it's more refined, it's more uh, taking time to cook it. Uh, you mentioned uh, Mexican cuisine, but fine dining Mexican cuisine is very French actually. Because you know, if you make a mole, there's uh, the sauce, the ingredients, but also times has to be there. Uh, even if you make carnitas, it's a better time, you know, it's like confit, you slow roast it. So, uh, so it is about cooking uh, ingredients with the, the, the time they need to be cooked. Also, uh, make the sauces, a good sauce, it goes with the right ingredients. So, it's all about the balance on sauce and cooking and time and, and uh, uh, that make uh, French cuisine a little different than uh, uh, other cuisine that I would not name the origin, they more bang bang, you know, quick, quick cuisine. You know? And nothing wrong with the other cuisine, but this is what French cuisine is. I just moved down here to South County from Santa Monica after 20 years. And I'm always looking for good places to eat. I came from the gastro pub of the country. It's really hard to find good food here, and then I found Pasquale. I come here all the time. I come here for breakfast, I come here for lunch, and now I'm here for the grilled octopus. There's no other place for it. I can't tell you enough. I speak so highly of him. And if you're not eating here, you're missing something. Yes, uh, we're in San Juan Capistrano in my, uh, now my flagship restaurant. Uh, we're up on here, we, he has a couple of steps. First, we're up on it as a cafe, bakery. Uh, like I used to have on Bristol Street, uh, Pascal Epicery, where we uh, do uh, you know, all our made pastries, uh, all this little daily salad, great sandwiches, <laughs> great soup, and take home dinners. So that opened about uh, an hour and a half ago. And then uh, three months later, uh, because of the, I look at the configuration of the space, eh, well, we can do a combination. Eh? Doing the uh, the pastry slash bakery, 
and find an ingress on. So I have everything under one roof. Uh, so in the back, I have a little room uh, that sits about uh, 28 people, very intimate. And uh, I decide uh, to cook a fine dining menu three nights a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Uh, it's very special. It's like a, almost my dining room. You come into my place. Uh, and the reason I open three nights a week is because I commit to be there those nights. So I will actually cook for you these nights. I, I would like them to say that uh, actually they, they were happy to work for me or work with me and uh, and they don't have to say much you know I just said they, they remember me at a great time and that I helped them uh, through their career but also I like to thank them too so uh, I always try to remember uh, the, the good employees and hopefully uh, that it goes both ways you know, so I think in that sense, yeah, I probably learned a lot from that, you know. But beyond that, I think also the, um, the good discipline of, of, of making a dish, you know. Uh, these days, you have a lot of restaurants that put things together. You know, it's, it's more about the show, less about how long it takes to make a good sauce, you know, how long it takes to make a good dish, a really, really true good dish, you know, like something that people, oh my God, this took a long, lot of time to reduce and, 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 and taste good, you know. We never work together in the kitchen. Yeah, okay. Okay, we never work in the kitchen. Yeah. I mean, literally. I'm sure if he works, I work with him, he, he's gonna whip me. <laughs> I'm sure he will. It, I, 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 sometimes I, I learn things as they go, you know? If you, if you go in my house and by my bed, you have a pile of cooking book like this. I have chairs around because, you know, when I'm tired, I go home, I'm so tired. Then I go take a shower, lay down in bed and grab my books and I read something I want to do maybe in a couple of weeks. I don't have a little Pascal next to my bed. I wish I could, <laughs> you know. I, I, I think, I, I hope one day we'll, we will work together. We, we, we have been talking about this and maybe it will happen one day. And I think that will be my real training school, you know. I, I, when I eat what he does, I, I'm like, wow, this is perfectly done. Because I know when I do it, I don't see it as perfectly well as he does it, you know. And I'm like, oh man, this is perfect, you know, and then, so then I know how it should be done, how its perfection should be. And then Humility, I think, uh, charity, uh, really being the person you are in the kitchen and outside, uh, finding balance and just making friendship, um, just lots of friends and life's about laughter and wine and eating and good times. So even as an old guy, you can still Oh man, he can kick my still. butt on the line any day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Do you, do you get nervous still? when he comes around? And take I did at first, and and now it's just like okay, I'm on top of it. Like I have jokes too. I'm I'm good for today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for kicking my butt. Thank you for putting me through everything that you put me through, and thank you for the opportunities that you've given me. Um, my first executive job was at French 75. I was 25 years old, and that was because of him. He found me in Tustin. I was working at a little comfort food restaurant that my friend opened, and uh, he said, come and talk to me. I have something for you. So I went and had a meeting with him, sat me down. He said, I don't know if you think you're ready, but I think you're ready. I have a big position for you. I said, what is it? So the executive chef, French 75, Laguna Beach. I said, all right. He said, are you interested? I said, yes, I'll do my best, 100%. I'm not going to pass up an opportunity like that. And uh, he brought me into French 75, and I ended up taking home the best French cuisine of Orange County from Golden Footy Awards in 2012, from the first Golden Footy Awards. And uh, I remember going on stage with him and standing next to him, and just the fact that I was, I was uh, nominated to be against Marché Modern with Chef Laurent and Pascal himself with Brasserie, I was, I was dumbfounded. I was like, <coughs> I didn't know what to say. My kind, kind of in the back of my head as a dream. I wish I could have done that. Uh, I think it's maybe too late. But if somebody will tell me, okay, Pascal, I have my restaurant. I'm, I'm going to give it to you for three or six months in France, just for you to have fun. I'll see 
uh, because I will, it's kind of my dream to, to see how the French in France will react to my cuisine. It's very hard to compare myself with French chef in France. You know? And uh, but I'm always excited when I go back to France, you know, trying the local ingredients, thing like that. But I will be twisted to know where to be. Of course, if I want to make a quick big name, I will go to Paris. You know? So, because like, like any uh, country, big cities uh, get you more quicker recognition. Uh, but I would like also to be in Normandy, where I was born. Because uh, this is where uh, I first learned cooking with my mother. So I know all the ingredients, I know everything there. But Savoir France, you know, because I like the ingredients of France, I like cooking with the olive oil, the fresh seafood, uh, all the herbs. Uh, I'm going to give you one more try in Southwest of France, cooking the foie gras on the duck and the geese and all these things. You know. I would love to be there, but actually, there, the food doesn't need to change. It's already good as it is, so I can bring that somewhere else. Yeah, yeah so Paris, Normandy, or South of France. Yeah. I feel uh, blessed and, and, and uh, very happy to get this type of recognition because I've been recognition. Actually, it's a very good satisfaction, and uh, I guess uh, I did something right. And uh, now I, 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 I like to thank the people I think I am uh, because we all work out. And, uh, and sometimes you know, we we like it I and mean, we love it. Sometimes we hate it, and we. It's, I don't think it's just ego. It's just a satisfaction that you know you accomplish something that people remember. I think it's good. Chef, congratulations! Thank you very much. It's really, a, really a pleasure. To me. Yeah. it's great. I think it's real. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> real. I, I love it. <laughs> it couldn't have happened to a better guy. <laughs> no, so, I'm very happy. Nice. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And, and uh, you know, I have to say, when you do a speech, yeah, you are prepared to do a similar thing, and you, you realize suddenly you forgot. You know. <laughs> like, I, I really forgot. I forgot to thank my staff, you know, mm -hmm. thank my cooks, my sh uh, chef, my uh, server, and yeah, that's all. Now I feel bad. I feel like I want to go back on stage. We'll, we'll get this out to them, so Thank we'll you. make sure Thank they, you. they get right. their, their due praise. Good, good. So, yeah. I, hey, I'm really happy for you. I really am. Thank I'm you very so much. Happy I, you I appreciate this. it. Thank so, you. what's in store Thank for you. next year? Are we going to see you back here? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Keep on doing. You know, I want a collection. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe I have a Baker's Dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> One appetite for <laughs> You like that? That's that's your that's your uh, trade, huh? Eh? Your all trade thing. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Something we can use uh, on our side. <laughs> uh, 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 two second, like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, with all that say, bon appetit. <laughs>